Welcome to Wellness Radio with Dr. Jeanette Gallagher as your host. Her show discusses topics of health, wellness, and spirituality and is about discovering your place in this great universe from your cells to the cosmos. Along with her guest in casual conversation, she strives to ask the difficult questions that may be holding you back from a vibrant life and shares new ideas that may inspire you to make a change in your life that you only can see in your dreams. And now, here is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Radio. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and it's a pleasure to have you with us here this evening. Tonight, we are going to be talking about our journey, our journey to a disease, a diagnosis, a symptom, a pathway, perhaps something that shuts our life down. What is our process through the experience of being able to be well, to improve our health, to be able to say, I'm choosing to stay on this earth? And what are the therapies and treatments that allow us another day of another breath? Then when we get on the other side, what do we do? Do we go about the way in which we lived our life before? Do we create a new path? Perhaps we say, I have no clue. Many times people will say, oh, I got it, I took that medicine, I'm good to go, and they're out back living their lives like they did before. And a reoccurrence, a relapse comes along. What happened? Did they not see the light at the end of the tunnel? Perhaps they didn't see that there is so much more to life other than just a diagnosis, a fix, and a way of life. Today we're going to be talking about the opportunity in cancer, how to radically transform your cancer recovery journey with Dr. Katrina Cox. What we're talking about today is where are we in life? How did we get to the moment in time we are in today? How can we process through therapies, treatments, and really looking at the body, mind, and spirit in a different way as perhaps a web of life, a web of health, perhaps a quality of life going forward versus saying, I need to get back to perfection, I need to get back to how I was before, fix me, fix me. Fix me time is over. What is your journey now? Dr. Katrina, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to have you, Dr. Katrina, because I think sometimes people will say, I got a diagnosis, now what? When in essence, when people come to me and they say, I have this diagnosis from my doctor, you know, what can I do now? And I need to have a remedy. And I think sometimes we have to say, the diagnosis is a stopgate. It is a door and it's a time and an opportunity to evaluate who and what you're about. Do you think perhaps that's a very first point when you see people just as I? Yeah, I, that's the premise is understanding that the things that show up for us, and specifically with cancer, obviously, um, mm-hmm. they they do they do present a possibility of an opportunity. They get us the opportunity to kind of look around and go, where am I at? How did I get here? What do I yeah. want? moving forward, you know, and so it allows us maybe to sort through some of the, you know, extra things that maybe we didn't want. Um, And we have to get to a place where we can see that because there's a lot of emotion that can get in the way of being able to actually see opportunity, uh, especially with, you know, a a life-changing diagnosis such as cancer. I think right off the bat, when cancer hits or other life-threatening diagnoses, we turn around and we say, oh, gosh, how did it get to me? It came from outside of me. It happened to me. And then the position of victim takes on. How all of this stuff is happening to me. And many times people will carry that victim sense, emotion, or identity with them right through the therapies and treatments and allow all of this stuff to come at them versus saying, I'm here, how did I get here? What are my choices going forward? That's very different, two different camps. It's one where I'm active in my life and in my body, in my mind, and in my journey 
versus it must be happening to me, someone else fix it, I got to get going. Yeah, so that's exactly the point. Understanding that uh, we can live with things. Right, it's not it's not an outside source coming in. It uh, you know the the whole purpose of cancer is that once it was a cell that was your own DNA, and something changed inside of it. And that doesn't mean that we take responsibility for that. But what we do do is we recognize what it is, and we're able to really work through a process to you know understand what we have um, and uh, what tools we have to be able to do the work that needs to be done. It's not a quick and a fast and easy thing, you know. It's not a, I just need a remedy, like you said, and I got to be out right. back out there in two weeks. It's a process. It's a journey. It's, it is the, it is the one thing or it is a thing that can kind of stop us in our tracks and go, hey, we got to make health a priority. We've got to make right. me a priority, right? And the purpose within my book is to give people a, an, an opportunity to find awareness within themselves so that they can find that, you know, because we can get really sidetracked. There's so many distractions, you know, like you said, there's so many things that pull us in different directions. Ultimately, we have to get clear Right, And that clarity comes from awareness and knowing ourselves and finding ourselves and making empowered decisions for ourselves. And that's, you know, that's the whole purpose. That's the purpose that you can do in order to find your opportunity. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I wrote the book. Do you think perhaps, too, the greatest opportunity that many um, times a diagnosis will present, first off the bat, is the emotional one? It is, why did it happen to me? What's it going to do to me? Where am I going to go from here? And I'll never be good again. And that idea, I think, right there, if you take a little bit of time, perhaps going on that journey, even if it's only for a day or an hour, or perhaps maybe for a week or two, you will find so many opportunities and insights into maybe what is truly unfolding in front of you and say, oh, I never realized that. Perhaps maybe I would like to work on that in this journey. Or maybe, no, that doesn't fit for me at all. And I'll, I'll access that part of my experience or my life path or my life journey or whatever I've been holding on to. I'll do that later. But I definitely think that to when we start uh, to have that very first emotion, that's something to look at and say, can I identify it and what is it about, do you think? Absolutely. I think that there is a large piece that's missing in our way that we approach this disease, right, and, and, yeah. and, and the people who live with this. We, we get all, it, it almost feels like, and you'll hear, you'll read sections in the book about this where, you know, all of a sudden, deer cotton headlights, it's boom, 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 appointment, 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 it's right. go, 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 and there's not that moment to just take a breath and process. And one of the things that when you don't do as you had suggested is that you don't feel comfortable while you're going mm -hmm. through treatment. You get less and less close to yourself. Right. And one of the spaces where people may find the time to be able to actually do this is in that remissive state or in that post treatment state, you know, right. There's never a wrong time. We can do it at any time. You know, we can do it at any moment. We can take any hour at any purpose. So even if you've been previously diagnosed, you know, right. And you're like, oh, yeah, I went through all that. Doesn't matter. At any moment, we can stop, take a breath and, and connect into who we are. And, and process some of those emotions. And the, the perfect opportunity for a lot of people is in that recovery phase. And that's because they've been left to their own devices. You know, there's no mm -hmm. reason to do follow-ups. There's no reason to do treatments. We're just, now we wait, right? We see what happens yeah. and wait, right? And so the, the journey of that, you know, anxiety and fear and everything else, 
you know, sometimes if that's the place that you get to before you can take that breath and take some time to process those emotions, then that's okay. Just do it at some point because that's what's going to be able to bring you back to yourself and bring you, you know, clarity about where to go and what, what is happening and, and what is the opportunity that you can find. Yeah. You know, so many times people would come to me over the decades and I would say to them, um, okay, so what are you here for, whatever, we get into a conversation, and then they would share their diagnosis and I would say, awesome, so glad to have you. And they're like, what? Awesome, what do you mean it's awesome that I'm sick? And I said, because perhaps your whole life has brought you to this point in which you are here today and what can we look at and go forward? It's really a turning point kind of idea. It's really a shapeshifter for the way we think. And it also is the way in which we navigate with our body within this world. That is truly a different way of looking at it. Because then we say, hmm, I could check out what I'm eating. Perhaps maybe I shouldn't have that job. Maybe my relationships aren't what they were supposed to be. Maybe I need to check on my blood work and see how my body is functioning. Perhaps I need to start sleeping. All of these things are the web and the world in which we live. However, we were in such a trajectory that we kind of were going on blinders down the road. So an awesome is like, oh, fabulous. Tell me about yourself. And it's sort of like, oh, my gosh, you would have thought that the floodgates opened up because all of this stuff comes out, and that's really where we want to be. Isn't that perhaps maybe the really golden opportunity to say, you know, we've got this. We're good. We can work through it. Perhaps? Yeah. I think part of, you know, the, 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 even the name of the book, The Opportunity in Cancer, mm-hmm. it, it, it can have that emotional part because a lot of people go, well, why would you even say that? And I right, said, well, right. the purpose of this is to actually have that turning point, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people who get through a diagnosis and a treatment, you know, they part of their struggle is because they don't know who they are anymore. Yeah. Everything that they know seems so foreign and distant and lost. And 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 ex- and the purpose of this is exactly as you say you know, it's a culmination to see that web of life come together. None of us, you know, there are a couple of certainties in life, right? None of us are going to live forever. You know, all of us are going to have to pay taxes at some point. There's all of these pieces that are, they're just basic certainties, right? But the outcome of how we live and, and the choices that we make in that web of life, you know, we have the ability to change our perspective, to change how we see things and to process the trauma and triggers of things that happen in life. And this is just one opportunity that, that presents itself. And so exactly like you said, when people come in and you say, thank you, thank you for coming in and thank you for being here. This is exactly what this this mindset shift is about, right? This is an opportunity to take and go, maybe I don't need that job or, you know, maybe I, you know, maybe I should change how I sleep or maybe this is more important to me and I value something different. And one of my favorite parts about that I talk about with patients is fear because mm-hmm. there's so much fear around specifically this diagnosis. And and when you're in remission, that fear doesn't go away. It's the fear of the next scan of it coming back and all these other things. And, you know, how, when you say, okay, so you have to deal with fear, people are like, I don't know, like, how, right? And part of the understanding is understanding what fear is. Fear is simply, fe- uh, you know, feeling like our values are being stepped on. So what is value and important to you? If you're fearful of getting another diagnosis or a, remit or, or a reoccurrence or all these other things, what is driving that? What is driving that fear? And that's important in, you know, the next steps that you're talking about. It's, it's important to get that clarity and to actually be able to shift our mindsets, you know. And, and one of the things that I work with my patients, as I'm sure you do, Dr. Jeanette, is like connecting at that level so that those mind shifts can become easier and connective. You know, the last several decades I've worked so much with end-of-life um, patients, and we really came to the point that the fear is the fear of not being able to survive. 
However, we got so stuck in that fear that we couldn't see the quality of life for today. What we've been speaking about on this radio show now for over a decade is about removing that fear. If we have today, a breath of today, live in the present moment. Because yeah. truly, as my daughter will always share, you know, as she is an emergency doctor uh, in the emergency room, she says, uh, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. You have to live in the present today. That's just what it is all about. So if we consistently keep bringing the past into today, we'll continue to live in the past. But if we say, um, I had the diagnosis yesterday, but today I'm going to get up, and even if I'm physically not able to do much or uh, mentally not really strong or perhaps don't really feel all that great, say, I have the breath of today. Can I have gratitude for the breath of today? And just live in the present moment. Because that may be where we're kind of getting stuck in this human story is that we believe that our quality of life must be like when we were 18. Instead of our quality of life, it's truly about the breath of today. And that's the joy and the simplicity of it. You know, a lot of times people will say, well, I was looking for love. And, you know, they say it's got to have all of these restrictions and, you know, those pros and cons and all that other stuff. Well, love is the only joy of love is unconditional love, and it has none of that. So in essence, are we finding that a quality of life is gratitude for breath, and that's it? Yeah, the li- the moments, the moments of the present. Um, when I was writing this book and when I work with patients, one of the things that it gives me, the gift that I find is that I go home and I hug my kids, I spend time with my dog. You know, I'm grateful yeah. for my partner. There, that, that allows me this perspective that I have just with in the, being in this work is allows me to be present with what is happening for each and every one of those people. And that gives me that gratitude. You know, and it's a very common trap. I mean, there are moments when I panic and freak out and, you know, do all the things that we're told that we're supposed to do. And, and, and then I have to come back to my roots and be like, it's not today. It's this is what today is. And so that presence that you're talking about is very, very important and compassion to allow for our process to happen at any moment, you know, and just yeah. live in that breath. You know, that's the most, that is one of the coolest things that we have as humanity. It's just an untapped resource in a lot of people. It's truly about letting out the emotions also. Um, You know, sometimes people will say, I'm so very angry. I am so angry. I am so angry. And they just can't even put enough energy into it to say how angry they are. And they say they want to beat something up. But then a lot of people really don't want to hurt anything else. And that's when you get out, you know, a set of kids' drums and you say, beat the heck out of it, you know. And then eventually they turn around and then they're smiling. They're saying, ah, that sounds so cool. I don't like that or I'm done with that or whatever it is. So I think the release of a mental, emotional, or spiritual time that you're having is like popping open a can of soda, kind of speak. Because then you can really delve in and see what the mixture is all about. That's when now we step into the body, and the body says, you know, well, I'm deficient over here. Other parts of your body say, well, I'm stuck here. Another part of your body may say, I haven't been functioning for decades, and you finally found me. Because now I've been pushing on all the other organs and telling them to wake up, but they decided to go to sleep too. So in essence, sometimes when you have a diagnosis and also with cancer, is that it's not one thing in your body that you're addressing. It's the entire vehicle, the whole human vehicle that you've stepped into that is being affected. It's, you know, that old adage, Dr. 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 Katrina, we turn around and we say, oh, my gosh, well, you know, I took that pill. That fixed my headache. That pill also affected your toe. It affected your eyes. It affected your heart. You know, that whole idea that uh, perhaps, oh, it's only going to go where it's needed. I don't think so. Do you think when once that cosm opens up, you say, now where do I go? 
Yeah, I think what you're describing is the network. I mean, my favorite machine on this planet is a body. <laughs> the human mm-hmm. body, it, it surpasses some of our well-thought beliefs and our understanding, you know, that we have at this moment because everything is connected. It's energy, you know, it, it, you know, it is cells, it is a nervous system, it, it is everything. And so what you're talking about there is just this ability to process you know, that first shield so that you can actually get deeper into how your whole body is interconnected. And when you take anything or do anything or see anything, you know, it, it, you, or, or have any type of experience, it leaves an imprint. It leaves an imprint on your mind, on your nervous system, on your cells, on your energy. And that imprint changes how we work as a body how we believe, how we think, what our cognitive abilities are. It all has an imprint. It is the smartest learning machine, but it also is adaptable. It is massively adaptable. And sometimes when we have all of, uh, anything happen to us, that adaptability turns those things off or on as it needs to in order to be able to adapt. And the whole purpose of finding opportunity in a diagnosis such as cancer is to to break through that shield and actually get into the network and hear and see and feel how everything is intertwined amongst itself so that you can impart it. Every single one of us has the power in ourselves to be able to find that. Sometimes we like to partner with other people to be a part of that journey, but one of the things that I tell my patients is, I, I I know very little about who you are. You are bringing that to the table. I'm bringing some clinical knowledge. I'm bringing some understanding. I'm bringing per, some maybe some perspective. But you truly are the one doing the work. I am just I am standing beside you in this journey. And sometimes, you know, you won't need me, and you will just be a well-oiled machine and be able to understand and, and hear and do the things that need to be done. And other times you'll need a partner and it might be me, it might be somebody else, but you ha- if you see it as that, then you are able to actually influence the entire network of what's going on inside your body, not just cause and effect. And so it isn't simple. It isn't a basic math logarithm of three plus two equals six, which is what a lot of the restrictive, you know, broken down models of medicine are. And there are parts where you're in emergency medicine and that's, that's the fire that you need to put out, right? Because in order for the body to do the next step, we have to make that intervention. But there are other times when it's more complex than that. And that complexity is what limits us in terms of quote-unquote finding cures because we can't treat cancer. We treat the people in front of us. And that treatment needs to be that partnership so that that person can explore and find their opportunity and turn things on and connect the right pieces so that they can experience life daily in those moments. And also to the idea of how did we get here? How did we get to this today, so to speak, when they are at the wall and they are just really reaching out, clamoring for help, um, just as you share, you know, it's you really ultimately only know about your own body. And what you share, bring to the office, and you put down on a piece of paper is what you're willing to open up about. It's all of that other stuff that you've kept in your mind or in your soul or in your thoughts or in your home or whatever that you are not sharing that may be the key to help you along this journey and really kind of break down some of those walls. You know, I did probably for, I think it's about 10 years, I did only home visits. And what I found was that which you hide lurks in your home. Yeah. And uh, you know, and once you step into the door it's like you're within that realm and you can truly feel the energy. What's it all about? How are they living? What's going on? What's contributing to perhaps as we would say the chaos within the body, mind and the spirit. Isn't that really what disease is potentially? It is just chaos. It's chaos that has gone amok. It doesn't have a direction. And it isn't working as it should be. Yeah, this is 
the the how to get here question is the mm-hmm. one. How did this happen to me? You know, why all these things? And it is a it is a very large question. And I I talk about a little bit in the book, you know, that it isn't one thing. It is many multiple things at many times. And this is exactly what you're talking about in terms of that chaos, right? Chaos isn't one thing. Chaos is multiple things happening all at the same time that can't be, you know, can't, that that seem un streamlined, right? That seem to be bombarding. And and this is an important distinction because, you know, there are lots of people who are like, I've created a life exactly the way I want and I do all the right things, but I still had this diagnosis. And I said, there's something else that's creating this mm-hmm. internal turmoil to turn these genes off or on. Um, right. and, and we have to get to that in order to be able to provide you with that living space that you're looking for. And so it goes deep. I mean, you know, if we talk about treating the terrain, which is still a physiological thought process, what we can't do is we cannot separate from the terrain, the mind and the spirit part of things. And so I love your saying about, you know, we hide that with which in our home because mm-hmm. we all, we are very much in this world caught up in a trap of being one, like in being one face, you know, outside and a different face on the inside. And there is a lot of emotion that can be associated with the things that we're hiding. And, and we, uh, there are some people who don't even realize they're doing it. You know, it's not a, it's not a conscious thought that we do that. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things about writing a book and getting it out there was that I had to be very vulnerable. I had to share why this was important, why, how I, how I got to these conclusions. I had to, I had to understand that process of being vulnerable and it was hard and it's a hard thing, you know, in, in practice, connecting with patients, in relationships, connecting with partners and friends and neighbors. You know, vulnerability is a scary place because it's a very challenging place for us to sometimes feel trust, right? Um, and it feels, vulnerability is exactly that. It feels like allowing people the opportunity to pick on our quote-unquote weaknesses. And this is where we have to like you know, transform into that compassion for ourselves, you know, finding those safe spaces and making sure that we are able to be fully truthful with ourselves, fully connected, fully compassionate, you know, right? And and, and really find that safe place to be able to do that work um, so that we can go into the next steps and not, you know, look for cause and effect, but look for cause and change, yeah. And that's what gets us to the next level. Let's talk a little bit, um, Dr. Katrina, about the idea that um, there's going to be so many questions once you have a diagnosis. There's about what you're eating, what you're drinking, where you've been, where you're going. Then there's a lot of testing to be able to see an inner, shine an inner light inside your vehicle and see where the mechanisms are going. It's sort of like you're shining a light inside of your car and checking all of the motors and seeing if they're cleaner, if they're dirty, if they're oiled, if they're not, if they're kinked, if perhaps maybe they need to be replaced or maybe they have some holes in them. So really when we're looking at it, we have to sometimes take our mind and set it to the side, our emotional um, I don't want to go there kind of idea. Set that to the side, and we can delve into the physical, and we can say, okay, let's do this. I'll open up the hood, I'll open up the doors, I'll open up the trunk, and we'll put it on a lift, and we'll see what's all going on. And when you can get to that kind of some sort of a picture or a projection of what potentially might be going on, then you start piecing things together If we move this here, if we have this work a little better, if we plug up that hole, if we take out this hose and put a new one, if we say we need a new motor, maybe if we say there's something that we can help assist by maybe lifting up the shocks or whatever, all of these things are ways in which we can help our body facilitate the process that it's been asked to do all along, and that is to keep us here in this world. So how can we say our physical human body, it needs to be at the best it can to navigate each day? There's a lot of work to be done. 
You know, I'll never forget, you know, this one of my patients said, my goodness, you gave me three sheets of stuff to do. And it was like all different things like massage and acupuncture and visualization and meditation, sleep and everything. And I and I said, but your your whole life is a web and there's a little bit in each one to look at. And they said, but I already have a job. This can't be my job. Yeah. I think so that when you hit the wall, that's when it's your job, right? Yeah. Well, this is what, yeah, exactly. When you hit the wall, that's when it becomes your job. One right. of the things that, uh, you know, that I, that I hope is that there are people that are able to connect with it. There is a time in a yeah. place, sometimes, you know, there's a time when we just focus on one part. You know, right? And and there is other times when we can focus on multiple parts. But what our society sometimes does and, and what the expectation is, is that we gloss over some of the emotional and spiritual work. Mm-hmm. Right? We we do the we do all the testing and we figure out the things and this and that and you know, right? And and, and we, we deal with the physical and then we get exhausted because we've done all of that hard work on the physical part mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden the the rest doesn't seem as valuable and or as important. Or we say we'll get to it. Right? And mm-hmm. so when when that happens for me, that means that the journey isn't complete. And when you don't complete the journey Right, you haven't been able to fully make the impact that you're looking for, and so uh, you know I talk about this with patients a little bit. There is a time for rest, and there is a time to do work, but there is always a time to learn and explore more. And if you're in a burned out stage, then this is something that we need to address Mm -hmm. because just saying, "Oh, it's just your stress," right? That's not good enough. Where is it coming from? What is happening with it? And what's the emotional component wrapped around it? Because in order to truly, that, that, that one situation, right, about stress, that one situation is a perfect example of how connected the physical body and the mental body are. Because stress is perceived. We perceive stress as a threat. And we do it to ourselves sometimes, right? We fill our calendars up and it's busy and we fit everything in and, you know, all of that stuff. But the reality is that, that our, our mind is perceiving all of this, right? And so it is the one place where those two in, in everyday society people can connect with because it is very connective. There are lots of other examples, but they're not as connected for everyone. And so that's a place where we have to like go deeper and we have to, we can't just sweep it under the carpet. It's not about just taking herbs for adrenal support or, you mm, know, or energy right. basing herbs. It's something more. And, you know, I think about this with one case I had many, many years ago. Um, there was a young woman, and I was preceptoring with a, with another ND, a new grad. And, you know, she came in, and we started talking. And so I said, well, you know, she'd seen all the specialists, and they'd given her all the things. and She'd seen other NDs. And I said, you know, I don't I, – I, this herb is calling to me. There's this one herb that's calling to me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, interestingly enough, this herb emotionally represents – the woman who takes care of everybody and, you know, right, right, and all this other stuff. And physically it connects with, you know, these physical symptoms that you're experiencing. So mm-hmm. let's take a look and let's just see what this one herb does. And this woman was told that she would never have children because she was like post-cancer, you know, right, all these other things. Right. And she came back three months later and was pregnant with her first child. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. practitioner afterwards said to me, how did you pick that herb? And I was like, well, it was talking to me. And yeah. she was like, and how did you know about the emotions? I was like, because I read it. Like, go find, you know, resources of, of those elders and those traditional people and so that they can tell you what these, what these things do and so you can connect with it on an emotional level, an intuitive level, as well as a physical level. And I think that that's what you're talking about is finding that space, right, um, you know, of being able to decide when is okay and not gloss over the, all of the work that needs to be done and, 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 and connecting with it you know, at every point and valuing all of the work that that you can do on a physical, mental, and emotional level. Yeah, because it truly is about being able to help the whole part of the web shine 
Because if you're able to see about your web of life all shining and being open and being free, things that come up to you can kind of drift through. You may have an emotional event, and all of a sudden you'll go, you know what, I don't need to get crazy about that anymore. It just doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't show up. You know, it's going to be okay. I've, I've been through worse. This one's, I got this. And it doesn't seem to affect your body as much. It doesn't seem to take you out, so to speak, in, in depression or having to sleep forever, you know, for two or three weeks. So what happens is, is that you become the type of person that things that come into your body to nourish, things that your body will start to regenerate, and things that you need to go, you just end up replacing them. Or things that need to be replaced will be. So I think the idea is, is that we can say, what is the outlook of our body? How can we facilitate the process of its journey and bring it along with us on our life journey? You know, I think sometimes people think that the body is just me. But then there's the soul, the spirit, you know what I'm saying, the emotional, the mind. There's all these other parts of us, but we forget about that. And we just take them and separate it out. You know, Dr. Katrina, I look at the end of, you know, over in time, in decades, you know, people over in the 1930s and 40s, that was after depression, you know, after war. People were very violent, you know, hey, an eye for an eye kind of idea. Then they started having to live in the houses, and everybody wanted a white picket fence so it could look pretty. But they didn't deal with their mind, and there was a lot of violence, domestic violence and drinking and stuff. Then we look at the years, you know, the 70s, people were getting straight teeth so they could look pretty for people. Then it was in the 80s, and it was like, oh, okay, you know, we're all looking for love kind of idea. Then in the 90s, it was needed to be perfect people, you know, the sudden increase of plastic surgery. Everybody was getting it. It was a kind of thing to do, right? Then we came now with the year 2023, and we're looking at it. We're saying, whoa, look at how far we've come. We truly have ventured around the web of life over our decades of being here on this earth. And isn't it awesome? So are we not perhaps saying regardless of our health, of our body, mind, or spirit, can we celebrate and say, how much we've really truly evolved over the decades? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is a point for celebration. It's important. Um, and I think that the celebration of all the little things as well as the big things, understanding our history and our past gives us the ability to recognize all the things to celebrate. Um, and I, I think that we have the ability in this 2023 world to be a lot more whole as a person. There are resources that we have. There are, we are able to connect at a bigger, more global level. Um, and that's really important. And I love that because we're able to bring our values in line. We're able to have these amazing conversations like I'm having with you, Dr. Jeanette, mm -hmm. and, and able to, you know, uh, find the people that need to hear those things, you know, and, and be able right. to, you know, have them also share it. Uh, you know, it's like the ripple effect, essentially. The more we have these conversations, the more we open things, the more likely things are to shift into a better place and a better world. And we are at the precipice of, of being able to make change. And one of the things that I get a little bit worried about is some of the anger and hate that we have in the world right now. And I get reminded by my kids that it's going to get better. And one of the reasons why it is so intense right now is because there is something new on the horizon. Right. The, 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 the newness is coming. And when you see this uprise in some of this negative emotion and state and hate, you know that the new part is coming, that new release, that new understanding of life is coming because that's when you get these uprisings uh, because, you know, the old world doesn't want to change. And so I love that there is the possibility of that. And I love that we are sitting in a world of opportunity. We have so much at our fingertips and we are able to see so much of the past and able to live so much in the present. So, you know, I'm, I'm feeling hopeful 
and, and uh, you know, feeling like there is opportunity. And my word for 2023 for myself is opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, in closing, I think it's truly about saying that we are all, as I call, stone turners. You know, you turn over that stone. Everybody's got to turn over some stones in their life. You know, they'll have things that will happen to them or whatever and hit the wall. Or when you hit the wall, you end up on the ground, so you're turning stones. But when you turn over that stone... You say, oh, well, you know, it's letting out anger. It's letting out that I didn't want to show. And I say, oh, isn't that awesome? Let's go in there and see what it's made out of. And when you turn over a stone, it's a whole other world inside of there to explore. And if we can just say um, to treat each moment with amazement, with uh, excitement, and with um, a great kind of like quest, become your own seeker so to speak, what you're really doing is you're not looking for perfection. What you're doing is looking for a journey and to see what's coming up. And isn't that something what we're talking about? Truly today, as we shared about cancer and diagnosis and being able to say when you hit the wall and what do you do and how do you get through it, and then everything else that starts to seem swells up inside of you, you say, awesome, what is it all about? That's when people start to become artists. They take out some paint. They do music. They start to go outside more. Perhaps they meditate. Or maybe they just sit there and bang on the wall until they put a hole in it and say, oh, finally I released my anger and now I'm bringing back my own power. So yeah. today I think, you know, Dr. Katrina, in closing, we want to say it's all about saying you have the power within. You don't need to get it from outside. You've got it. You just need to be able to let it loose, right? Absolutely. Curiosity. You know, finding your curiosity to find that adventure, just as you said, and connect on that journey. I love that. I love that you can connect on that, and I love that people are able to maybe find their own power inside themselves, and not maybe, they will see it. And then when they connect with that and and they approach it with curiosity, then they can see opportunity. And that is... Lovely. And what I always wanted to close and share is that it's not about finding the same as someone else. Oh, no. Energy energy is never the same. It is similar. It is not the same, which is why life is a tapestry and not a line. And I think that's very important to close and say, you know, that's awesome because we are a part of a tapestry. So in other words, we can stand side by side and be together, but we are not overlaying upon each other to be as one. Yeah, it's unique. Yeah. And that's how the tapestry of life looks so beautiful. Well, Dr. Katrina, it was a pleasure to have you. Can you share with the listeners how to find out more information about your work? That would be great. Yeah, so we uh, you can read about the book at theopportunityincancer.com. You can order it there and everything. We also have a website for all the resources. All my blogs go up there, cancerremissionmission.com, and that's where I'm building an online community for those that want more access and to understand more about their journey and connect with others so that they can also build their own network of people and support networks and so that they can connect on a deeper level. So, yeah, so The Opportunity in Cancer is the book, and there's a website there that you can you can go and, and buy the book from. And then, of course, the resources section is cancerremissionmission.com. Very good. Well, Dr. Katrina, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to have you with us here today to walk along thank this journey. Thank you for having journey. me. Thank you. Yeah. If you'd like to find out more information about Dr. Katrina Cox, again, the book is The Opportunity in Cancer, How to Radically Transform Your Cancer Recovery Journey, please do click on the link on the bottom of today's show page to go directly to her website for more information, check out the book, and become part of her community to help each other and assist others and self along this journey in life. And it truly is about being able to say, can we be open to be able to say there is so much more out there, regardless of how we're feeling today, how we felt yesterday, or perhaps what we fear tomorrow. It really is saying this is all a journey, and we're really all becoming seekers. So step up, open the door, let some fresh air in, and say, whoa, put my feet to the ground today, and what's up for me today? And enjoy your journey. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and until tomorrow, have a great day. Today we discuss many life-changing concepts. Who do you turn to, and how do you know what is best when faced with a health crisis? Dr. Jeanette is a patient advocate. She listens to the patient, the doctors, and the family, clarifies the health issues and concerns, then helps the patient make the best choices going forward. If you would like help implementing change into your life and health, we can talk and see where you are stuck and how to improve the quality of your life. Check the link on the bottom of today's show page or visit drjeanettegallagher.com to schedule a phone appointment today.